Hey YouTube, my Patreon patrons requested a video of Sunvox, so that's what we're doing today. This is a really elaborate uh, modular synthesis engine with all kinds of different stuff going on that includes a kind of a classic style tracker. And I don't get along with classic style trackers, so we can forget that. And this is the sequencer for that, we can get rid of that too. The on-screen keyboard is kind of a pain in the ass to work with, because if you're holding down a key, and then you try to adjust any parameters, it, it instead thinks you're trying to slide on the keyboard. So instead of using that, uh, I'm going to make use of the um, uh, MIDI and use my rock band keyboard here, or keytar I should say. And uh, to get into the MIDI on this, you have to go into the preferences and select it as an input. And when you're using virtual MIDI, I sometimes have some issues if it's on any, so I, I usually switch it over to channel one, but it's gonna work fine with my uh, USB interface. And I usually try to start off with some sort of goal in mind of what I'm gonna do with this, but uh, there's just so much in here. It's just, it's a massive modular synthesizer. So uh, I'm just gonna go for something big and epic. And I like the generator that it starts you off with. Uh, you can switch the uh, oscillator type. You just get the usual saw, triangle, square, noise, and then there's dirty, which is quite dirty. But if we calm that down by drawing in a waveform right here, It's a little bit more melodic now, uh, instead of being all kinds of crazy. Uh, let's hear that sounds polyphonically. It's a little crazy, but I think that works with the echo. Uh, it's got this crazy, like, watch the uh, echo here. It's, I'm not touching anything, and it keeps on playing for quite a while through the echo, and I kind of like that uh, with this grit, gritty sort of thing. I'm going to use this as kind of a uh, uh, sub, um, sort of. Uh, let me throw in a more traditional analog generator here and connect that and give that a square. And I'm actually going to drop that a few octaves on my keyboard. All right. I'm going to tweak the duty cycle, and since I'm definitely going to make this a polyphonic and big epic patch, I want to make sure that the uh, duty cycle, which is the uh, pulse width, doesn't go too far in either direction, because like if you make it like crazy in one direction, it might sound fine monophonically, but uh, as soon as you get into... God, this is a pain in the ass to work with. It's a little too gritty and... That's, that's not going to work for what I have in mind here, uh, so let me calm that down. You hear how it immediately becomes a lot smoother sounding together. Alright, I like that. And uh, I'm going to reduce the volume on that, though, because it's going to be loud when I throw that in with everything else. And I'm going to duplicate this. So what I've got right now is this generator that's making this kind of textury thing. Which sounds crazy with it uh, in a lower octave. I like that. Uh, let me set that to always be in a lower octave using a multi-synth here. And I'm going to transpose it. It's kind of weird. The transposition is giving it in bits. So it's at 128 as like being right in the center. And to drop it an octave, I need to drop it 12 bits. Uh, so to 116. <clears throat> and I'm going to send that here. Let's see how that sounds when I crank up my octaves on my keyboard. That still might be a little too crazy. Try to 
Make it a little random, but not too noisy. Okay, it's still got the shimmering gristle there. Uh, let me throw that now. The multi-synth is gonna, as long as the multi-synth is selected, it's gonna send it to everything that's connected to it. So uh, now it's, it's triggering off the analog generator and uh, attach the other analog generator. But I want the second analog generator to be a sub sub synth. So uh, I'm gonna copy the multi synth. No. There we go. Copy and paste. And because I've already done the transposition. Oh shit. Since I've already set the transposition on the first one, it's now gonna drop this a second octave by connecting it like this. Or it should have done. Oh, that's right, I was. It's sounding all right. Let's throw some stuff on top of that and hear how it's going to sound in a mix of things. Uh, one thing that's in here that I, I really like to play with is the uh, FM uh, oscillator, which is... I've never done a video on uh, FM. Uh, frequency modulation synthesis is basically sending waves at, at waves. Uh, so you use one wave to change another wave. And in Sunvox, it's really simplified. You've only got two waves to work with. You've got a carrier that you hear. Crank that up so you can't hear it. It's a sign, so it's it's just making a single uh, note there. So uh, then you've got the modulator, which changes that. And if you drop the carrier, you hear absolutely nothing because you never really hear the modulator. Um, so in this instance, I'm going to play around with that. And honestly, like it'd take me an hour to try to explain frequency modulation in any greater depth than it's it's basically like it boils down to just experimentation and a, ba a few basic ideas like um, you, you've got these multipliers so uh, if you take a sound that's being modulated by one you take your carrier and modulate it by a modulator wave and then change the modulator wave multiplier up the note goes up but if you take it down it goes down. So you get kind of bassy notes, but it's still got the, the fundamental in there. And you can play around with how the modulator works using a modulator specific uh, attack to case sustain release envelope here. And giving it a little bit of attack is usually the best way to start off with this. Here, it changes over time. And then you get uh, feedback, which is uh, also pretty good. It messes up that modulator. You don't have to do it too much. But it, it's giving it more texture than just the sign sound. And the, the volume of the modulator is affecting how much it is affecting the carrier. So uh, if you crank this up, it once again gets super crazy, but you can calm this down. So if you look at the uh, oscilloscope there, it's still kind of sign shaped, but it's got a lot more texture and detail in there. Yeah, I'm not crazy about how that's sounding. It does sound pretty good in chords though, so let me throw a reverb in here. A 
reverb's catching the texture real well. All right, let's uh, throw in another multi-synth here. And this one, I'm not gonna screw around with the transposition, but this is gonna be the, the, the primary thing that controls everything now. So as long as this is selected, all of this is gonna play. Something's a little too heavy in there. I think it's my generator. I'm throwing an EQ on that. I'm trying to tame that. You notice when I have the EQ selected, it's playing the generator that's before it. So if I have the reverb selected, it's going to play the F. Should have played the FM. I guess it plays whatever you touched last. Yeah, okay. That's interesting. So uh, with the... Oh, I'm going to hear this if I do that. All right. So with that going on... Try to remove some of the highs here. Oh, uh, you know what? I can go in here and actually change the polyphony down to one. All right, that's probably gonna sound a lot better with uh, everything else now. It's getting there. That's pretty epic. I think now I need to change the uh, analog generators a little bit. Yeah, they need some filtering. Delete this one. And tweak this one. Oh, shit. Um, drop this a couple octaves. And give it a low pass filter. Give it a little shimmer. Maybe a lot of shimmer. Let's see how that sounds with everything else. That surprised me. Oh, that's right, I'm a couple octaves lower. I could be at this for a half hour, so I'm just going to stop the video now before it gets too long. Uh, hope you enjoyed this. Thank you very much to all my Patreon patrons for making this possible. I really appreciate you guys. If you would like to sponsor this and future episodes, please uh, check out the link that's going to be at the end of this video. Take it easy, guys. As we were listening to that, I was starting to get bored with this, so now I can go back in here. And it, this is exactly why I like this app so much, right? Like, I get bored with it, and now I can change it all together. If I were to exaggerate that, you could almost, you know, do some kind of quasi postmodern dubstep or whatever with that. Just wobble the fuck out of that. But that's not what I'm trying to do here. So uh, let me figure out a way to make this rich texture work with the lead.